the house we were living in in Tenerife, the owners were coming back and we had to leave. We found Jem, we bought her blind, packed our car, drove from the Canary Islands across Spain, across uh, Europe to get here. And that's the start of the adventure. Wyland said the ocean stirs the heart, inspires the imagination, and brings eternal joy to the soul. Let's investigate that. Hello everyone, I'm Taylor Jane from Sailing Trinity. Welcome to a special five-part series that is serving as an intermission to our Around the Islands in 80 Days voyage. Unlike our usual stories of Greek mythology, in this series we dive instead into the modern tales of present-day sailors. We will explore their most memorable moments at sea, be it for better or for worse, the valuable lessons they've learned as a result of this lifestyle, and their personal personal advice on living freely and fully. As I venture off on my personal travels this summer, I invite you to join us here every fortnight to dive deeper into a different colorful chapter of these extraordinary lives. Take a second now to subscribe and like the video before we jump in. Once again, I'm Taylor Jane and these are your storytellers for today. Beautiful. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Professional. Right, so hello everybody. Uh, we are Hinton and Dana, Dana mm -hmm. and these are our dogs Sailor and Jabu. I'm from South Africa. I'm from a, a city called East London, which is in the Eastern Province. And Dana's from Madrid. From Spain. <laughs> capital of Spain. And we've been living aboard our boat since September 2022 and we've been sailing since that point onwards basically. All right, so Gem is our first boat and we bought her without having any experience basically in the sailing realm. Just before buying her, I did my RYA day skipper course that was in the Canary Islands. And yeah, we sort of just <laughs> took it from that point on and uh, we're learning as we're going. It's a bit of a long story which we're gonna try and summarize. <laughs> we were traveling and living in Southeast Asia where we met actually for like seven, eight years and then we decided we wanted to settle maybe and we chose the Canary Islands and we were there for a couple of years before the pandemic hit and we were looking for properties in the Canary Islands, in Portugal, in Azores but when the pandemic hit, everything started becoming super expensive, at least the style of properties we were looking with land, you know, for the doggies. So we, we started thinking, what can we do to continue having a bit of freedom in our lifestyle? Like we were always traveling, we were always like very free people. Yeah, maybe living on a boat and he, he told me about it. I wasn't very convinced, I have to say. I, I am still a bit, you know, getting used to this lifestyle. It wasn't like a thing I had a dream all my life and let's do this. So the long and short of it is that basically during the COVID pandemic, we got priced out of property uh, in the Canary Islands. So we looked at other options and then we came across the idea of sailing. Uh, so we were looking at monohulls, which was quite short lived because we began to make a list of what we really truly wanted. So we shortlisted our search into catamarans which needed to be fast, general, overall good performance and still within our budget. Our current boat, Gem, which is a 2006 PCI Gemini, uh, 105 MC is the model. And yeah. 34 foot, it's perfect size for me at least, I thought to learn how to sail first of all. And yeah, and the universe actually worked in our favor because the house we were living in, in Tenerife, the owners were coming back and we had to leave. And in those like very stressful two months of not finding a rental with two dogs, we found Gem. We bought her blind actually just after a survey. Yep. And we packed our car, drove from the Canary Islands across Spain, across uh, Europe to get here. And that's the start of the adventure. <laughs> we bought her in Greece basically where she is laid up right now. When we bought her, 
this berth was included in the sale so that was another aspect which uh, definitely helped us on the decision making side of things especially being across. our first boat and for me my first like so, experience on a mm -hmm. boat it was in my mind it was safer to to think that we had a berth mm -hmm. just in case because you know so that also helped me not, mm -hmm. not feel like I'm leaving land and Hinton is taking me to the middle of the ocean <laughs> or something like that so it was a gradual gradual change yeah so that was just one aspect of things the other aspects are that this is a really considered a great performance catamaran uh, for her size of course she's 34 feet it's not unusual to get 10 to 12 knots of boat speed out of her and we often find ourselves reefing considerably early to slow her down she's got in mast furling which was uh, another a point she's got an oversized genoa of 150 uh, percent which is great for light wind sailing and then furthermore she's got a screecher sail which is uh, just you can't ask for much more uh, when it comes to those days with three or four knots of wind <laughs> We already said for me it's that it's not so big honestly in my mind i'm a very like safe person and i like to have everything under control so i always think like if anything was to happen you know like to hinton or something i think i could feel confident you know <laughs> sailing this boat and i hope so i hope so <laughs> me too and i think it's a perfect vessel for a uh, for the first uh for me it probably leans more towards the performance of the boat for me it would be the centerboards Will, uh, being able to give us that additional draft and pointing uh, further upwind because that can knock a certain amount of time or miles off of your trip. So definitely the centerboards. The other thing is that we have lifting rudders as well, um, which of course can get us even shallower into, into the anchorages. <laughs> This one's an easy question because at least it's sailing. <laughs> mm -hmm. We've only been to Greece since we purchased purchased gem here in Preveza Marina. We've explored this side of Greece, so the Ionian Islands. But because we it was our first season sailing, we we tried to stay closer to this marina. We had to pick up some packages, do some upgrades and things like that. So we explored mostly the southern islands. Mm -hmm and the Embracian Gulf, which is also one of our favorite places. Yeah, it's a nice uh, hidden gem, even <laughs> during during the peak of the season, uh, on in a particular anchorage, we were the only, the only boat. In August. On, yeah, <laughs> in August. Uh, so the Gulf offers us, yeah, that escape from the crowds. All right. Uh, so, the liverboard lifestyle is overall a challenging one. There's just day in and day out challenges, right? <laughs> a challenge in itself is how to deal with the challenges. <laughs> and that is how to maintain your mental fortitude. Because you can't give up. This for me was a big thing that sailing has taught me, that I have no control. Even if you, when you're living on land you know this, but it doesn't test you so much because you really do things that make you believe you have control like for example for me personally was like keeping the house totally tidy and it's a thing to have a house tidy and another completely different thing is to have a boat tidy because when you live in such a small space everything <laughs> everything has to go out to fix something for example so like when we have to fix anything on the boat this space here just gets full of things so my mind is always in this constant fight of I can't even control cleanliness or organization, so you let you let go. And then the weather. The weather is the other teacher that doesn't matter what you want. If that day you want to go sailing and you had plans and the weather report said one thing, but you wake up and you look at the sky and things are not what was predicted, you have to adapt. Yes. And that is a challenge for, I think, for a lot of people maybe that are like me, like, like control. So this teaches you to let go. Well, staying on the weather subject yeah then you've got entire seasons winter is cold it's wet it's unrelenting 
some boats are kitted out for it, which is true, like the boats which are designed and built in Northern Europe. But other boats, like ours, <laughs> yeah, including Gem, she's great for the med, but uh, if you can handle the cold. But we are particularly, uh, how do you say it, yeah. susceptible yeah, we don't to like the cold. The cold. Yeah, yeah. from hot places as well. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. seven or eight years uh, traveling. Also what? Asia, Southeast Asia, yeah. living in the Canaries in the south of Tenerife, so we are very used to the heat, but yes. not to the cold. Once you're through winter, you get your spring and your summer, and that's when the the hardships are just a distant me distant memory. And yeah, just keep the mind strong. Yeah, we're very new still. That's yeah, yeah. why. <laughs> that's it. We're in the same boat. <laughs> All right. So why did I or we choose yeah. this sentence? It's basically because it's true. <laughs> you can have the biggest budget on this planet, or you could have no budget at all. You still have to get through the maintenance of the boat, the certain jobs which there's just no getting around. Same challenges. Yes, the experiences will be different. However, the, uh, however they will still be somewhat similar. We will all have like similar expenses, like depends of course on the size, but all of us that are liverboards and sailing, we like we can understand each other. There are like certain moments that are very difficult, so when we keep in mind also between us, like we're all on the same boat, it mm -hmm. also you have to work together. <laughs> yep. This is the thing, like even if you have like a bad day or a bad moment, like you cannot hold on to like anger and not speak to the person you live with because of course, no like, <laughs> nowhere to run. Yeah. To work together, there's no room, there's no space. So literally, we are on the same boat, and also with other sailors. I know they can yeah. understand us. We all have this level of understanding. Doesn't matter the yeah. budget. Doesn't yeah. matter the size. Yeah, we all have our houses and on our investments bobbing around in the water, which <laughs> is the harshest environment to be in. So yeah, there you have it. We're in the same boat. <laughs> Beautiful. A pair of chopsticks. <laughs> right? First of all, the utensils for eating, but they are a multi tool in themselves. When you realize that for any boat job there's a specific tool, and each tool costs money, and that <laughs> money is not a small amount. Uh, that adds up and then you've got to store it, it's additional weight in the boat. So for a pair of wooden chopsticks to be utensils for getting into places where you've dropped something, if you know how to use them of course, uh, also for mostly like a small unobtainable inaccessible areas for threading with two pairs of chopsticks you can thread a, a nut onto a bolt and then work your way from there. Uh, you can use it to hold tissues and dry areas which uh, become wet. For cleaning. Cleaning inside <laughs> crevices. Little places. I yeah. use them a lot. It's true that maybe our influence is having lived in Asia so long, but <laughs> you and your chopsticks. <laughs> it's, it's very useful to have a couple of spare pairs of chopsticks yeah. on board. The biggest fear for us would be having to actually part with the money <laughs> to buy the boat. Uh, it was, as I mentioned, originally we were looking at monohulls and then we we kind of went off course and we've decide, we decided on catamarans, which blew our budget completely out of the water. We went in with about 85% of our budget to buy this boat and already knowing that there's going to be work from day one and we don't yet have possibly the skills to do it i'm 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 fairly hand a uh, handy person so i know if i if i just put my determination towards things i can get the job done but also there's some things that i can't do on the boat so we had to trust the survey we had to trust uh the gods, you the know, gods some things life that we were gonna <laughs> are out of our hands, and yeah, we didn't have uh, much money after yeah. buying the boat. 
So. so that was a great fear because we've made mistakes in our life before. So we also had uh, a bit of <laughs> inner fear with parting with our, all our savings because we mm -hmm. don't have anything else. Mm -hmm. Like we don't have properties, we mm -hmm. don't have anything else. So yeah. we live day to day. <laughs> yes. And it's more common than you may think that mm -hmm. uh, you buy a boat which is considered to be good and it just turns out to be an absolute lemon. Mm -hmm. Basically you're left on the hard fixing this boat for the foreseeable future or running out of money trying to do it. So we were afraid of that but it all worked out mm. perfectly fine. Yes we had to do upgrades but our fear was a bit over <laughs> overcome or <laughs> come from that. But yeah. Yes basically <laughs> buying a boat running out of money and not being able to live on the boat was our fear. would have been our biggest fear realized. Yeah. And of course to be honest my other fear is not only economical it's the safety yeah, I I'd never lived on a boat before yes we we worked in the diving industry and we've been in different boats but not you know not live aboard not in a sailing mm -hmm. catamaran mm -hmm. so the idea of going from land to boat and living you know moving around and the weather like we always explain and storms I'm, I still have that fear in the back of my head but same like other little things we've we've you know overcome yeah. together I think Yes, we, we can do it. <laughs> we weather the storms yeah. and true that at the end of the day, the sailor breaks before the boat does. Yeah, and I yeah. trust Hinton a lot, so <laughs> yeah. that keeps me also very grounded yeah. on water. <laughs> take care of the boat and she'll take care of us. Yeah. We plan to purchase another boat. Uh, Jim has been a great introductory boat. A brilliant first boat for us and in some aspects we will absolutely miss her uh, but we see ourselves moving on to a bigger catamaran yes mainly for the space she has a lot of space uh, this current boat as it is for her size no doubt but if we load her up too much she doesn't displace too much she she's she displaces about four and a half tons so this is where the performance comes from, narrow holes, but as soon as you load her up, uh, of course that takes a hit. So we're looking at uh, a slightly bigger cat in the 38 to 40 foot range. Also due to our future sailing plans, we look at uh, slightly bigger passages, potentially some crossings. I don't know, but Hinton told me already before we bought the boat, like every sailor always wants a bigger boat. <laughs> yeah, maybe I can. And maybe it's true, but it's true that for a first boat to live on it, it was perfect. But if we were to continue this lifestyle for longer, we want to do longer passages and, for example, have other comforts, for example, a water maker or things that are very heavy that we could install on Jem, but then her performance would be... We'll take a hit. Exactly. So we are thinking of everything. <laughs> we will do maybe one more season or a couple of seasons even with Jem. And yeah. if she sells, we will get maybe a bigger. <laughs> <laughs> but I love her. <laughs> Well, I would say that if you feel stuck in your current life, do not go and try and do something completely different because it would be like a substitution of something that you're not feeling complete with. So in reality, you're just substituting the feeling of emptiness with another thing and it might not be exactly what you want. So if you feel stuck in your life, I would recommend, of course, there's many practices, there's many things you can do to try and feel unstuck before you make a drastic life decision but if you want to test this life and see if it is for you while you're feeling stuck in your current life then for example Hinden and I always speak about like maybe getting experience as a crew member or mm -hmm. in marinas or there's like groups of people that go sailing definitely there's enough people in this world who buy boats and don't know how to use them <laughs> so you could jump aboard with them and learn together <laughs> like us to to some extent but uh yeah we've met throughout yeah. our time uh many first-time boat owners with zero experience uh so if you're looking to build experience with the view of maybe living the sort of lifestyle i would say do exactly that so once you have your initial experience you're going to need to build some skills revolving and relating to the boat. Once you have your boat, 
you are basically every kind of tradesman on this earth. <laughs> so it it really helps to be able to do the jobs. You're saving time, you're saving money, uh, you're saving potentially having to move your boat to different parts of regions wherever you are just to get to somebody who can do the work. So that's very important, the experience and then building the skills. Once you have that, uh, you're probably in a stronger position to start looking at your first boat, a boat which is strong and seaworthy. So that is uh, safe rigging, the hulls need to be osmosis free, safe and structurally intact. If you've got that down, then you need to look at your other systems to a point that you're happy with. That's basically the beginnings of a seaworthy boat, of a vessel. I'll add to all that, but also your mental fortitude. What we were talking about before moving on to the boat. Bad jabu. Cut. <laughs> jabu. 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 I'm just doing that on purpose. Come here, boy. Oh, it's because he wants to. Different yeah. position also. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, settle down. <laughs> I would say one thing you don't need to worry about is the too much is about the cosmetics of the boat because you'll find an owner who has taken good care of the of the bones of the boat wouldn't let the cosmetics fall far too too far behind. Another thing is I would get a survey unless your boat is less than the value of the survey <laughs> let's say <laughs> all right but then you can expect a, a certain amount of work to be done on the boat or be needing to be done i would say also the mental fortitude mm -hmm. and to practice that also before moving here that letting go of control mm -hmm. or things are not going to be <laughs> how you want them to be and you will you will have to adapt so you can practice that in everyday life before moving onto a boat for sure <laughs> Beautiful, thank you. Well, honestly, I think the questions were great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it covered, it covered a lot yeah. of what we think. But yeah, the summary is, if you are in a balanced state of mind and heart, actually, whatever you do, you will do it correctly. It will be your, your path. So if you really want to do this lifestyle, you have to try it. Maybe it isn't for you, maybe it is. I'm still learning as I go and I'm open to change. So if someday I don't like it anymore, I will change. And I think that's the biggest thing. I know you don't want to, but you don't know. <laughs> See what the captain has to say. See what about the captain that. has to say. I just, yeah, yeah, I think mental fortitude, doing things from your heart, I think it's one of the bases for any lifestyle, especially one where you have almost no control. All right, we'll leave it as that, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, sailing, of course, this lifestyle, sailing in general is not necessarily for everybody. So uh, that's why before diving in and buying a boat, uh, try and get some crewing experience. <laughs> and you'll know. You'll know. You'll definitely know within the f first three times you step aboard uh, if it's something you want to pursue or not. Lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. Did you guys want to plug your YouTube channel as well? You don't have to. It's up to you. <laughs> sailing Cat Gem on youtube that's us we're we're not the best <laughs> at it but we will learn from from taylor <laughs> <laughs> free yeah. lessons guys yes, this is all part go. of my style <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> all right thank you so much for your time and to the viewers thank you yeah, for listening thank you for sticking us. around <laughs> and yeah We'll see you on the other side. <laughs> Thank you. Well, folks, that's it for today's stories. Don't forget to head over to our channel to catch up on our 80-day voyage around the Greek islands while you're here. We're grateful that you took the chance to escape the ordinary with us today. See you in another video. Bye.